Hello and welcome to another episode of The Flying Reporter. It's May 2022 and I'm at Loch Doom in Scotland. I'm getting an opportunity of a lifetime to undergo some training towards the seaplane rating. One of the most thrilling and rewarding skills a private pilot can learn. Join me and my instructor as we fly around locks and glens in this Cessna 172 and stop at remote beaches and islands to take in the view. Why wouldn't you want to do this every day? <laughs> It'd be great if you could, wouldn't it? <laughs> Isn't this just wonderful? Scotia seaplanes based out of Prestwick Airport operate this amphibious Ream Cessna 172F and they've invited me up for a seaplane experience. Instructor Stuart Houston explains what the seaplane rating involves. It's eight hours of training towards a class rating plus a skill test, which generally takes about two hours. And what level of skill or experience do you have to have, do you think, in order to start the course and be successful? It's, it's probably good to be a pilot of average to above average ability. Anybody with tailwheel experience right. is generally very comfortable in the aeroplane because it's all about pitch attitudes, understanding pitch attitude, knowing what pitch attitude is required for each phase of uh, takeoff and landing. Is it very different to land plane flying? The flying's exactly the same. The circuit work is generally conducted at a much lower altitude, about five, six hundred feet, if not a little bit lower. There's all that drag from the floats, which does affect the performance and the handling a little bit, as you'll see. Uh, but it's generally uh, an aeroplane's an aeroplane. It's when it's on the water that it's quite different. Guarding the brakes. My first lesson will be standard landings and takeoffs on water, or should I say, alightings and takeoffs on water. But first, we have to get to Loch Dune, and so I learn how to handle this amphibious aeroplane on the ground. Okay, so let's have a taxi lamp on, close the throttle, still the head temperatures up, park brakes off. You can follow me through, John. Roger. Key thing we need to do first of all is straighten those little castering nose wheels. So check outside that we're not going to hit anything and then it's just a case of differential braking to steer and we've been cleared to Romeo 1. It might look like the equivalent of a large shopping trolley but actually by taking everything slowly taxiing was perfectly manageable. Cross off a mic, uh, surface wind uh, 250 degrees 1 1 knots via Romeo 1, runway 21 cleared for takeoff. Clear takeoff 2 1 via Romeo 1, go off a mic. Okay, you can follow me through in the controls, John, if you wish. So, what have we got? We've got a slight crosswind from the right. Happy to go, John? Yep. Following me through, heels in the floor now, stick fully back like it would be Present underwater. Off now, whiskey requesting runway 2 1 for departure now. Whiskey, Roger, taxi Take off is set, these are stable Sorry, and normal, airspeed's alive. Control, 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 control. When you feel the nose wheels Sorry, rise, right just check way. forward Sorry, and hold that attitude until it gets airborne. Okay. We are airborne, you have control. I have control. Aim for about 75, a pitch attitude for 75 miles an hour, John. Sure. Why can't I get enough rudder in? Nine hey. morning information, Charlie. There you go. Right. You're one using lots and lots of rudder. We've got yeah. information, Charlie. Can it? One, two, two, Jesus. Two. Yeah, it's a bit like that, isn't it? To the 75, I'll retract the gear. Speed's checked. Gear up. Flight uh, 09, start is approved and uh, request... 300 feet, uh, clear of all obstacles. So you can lower the nose ever uh, so slightly control and I'll retract the flap. You ready for the trim change? East and fly east of the Glasgow control left face. Well, that's quite dramatic. That's quite dramatic. Control so control control you can trim to help yourself out and uh, turn on to a heading of about south. And... Um, what speed are we looking for now? We're looking for about 83 miles per hour is the best rate of climb speed. 85 should do, between 80 and 85. Compared to what I'm used to, the aircraft flies very differently. As you saw, I needed pretty much full right rudder on the climb out. It's very draggy and a little cumbersome to handle. So we have left the land environment with a view to becoming a seaplane. 
Yep. So we must remind ourselves that we are in a seaplane. Four blues, pump lights out, gear selectors up, and we have visually checked that the gear is up. Yep. We are now a seaplane. What do most pilots find difficult when transitioning to the seaplane? It's generally glassy water. I, I tend to find that people will struggle most with glassy water. It, it's counterintuitive that the calmer the wind and the calmer the surface, the harder it becomes. And it's because there's no depth perception, so we have to treat that quite differently and, and basically fly an instrument approach onto the water. Gosh. And that's what people uh, find a, a little bit of a challenge. But uh, once people have grasped the technique and they understand where the, the, the usual mistakes are made, that uh, they, they accommodate quite quickly after that. Prior to flight, Stuart and I spent a bit of time in the classroom and he introduced a new pre-landing check called the Woods Check. W stands for wind speed and direction. O and O stands for obstacles above and below. D stands for depth. S stands for shape, size and surroundings. So, we're coming towards a water environment. Remember the Woods Check? First thing we're going to do is try and assess the surface for the wind conditions. First question, is it glassy? Can you see any reflections in it at all? Not really, no. Good. So, we're not going to need a glassy water landing technique. Second question will be, when we get to the water environment, will we be able, will we be able to see any white features on the surface? If the answer is no, the wind is less than 10 knots. Then we have to somehow use our experience and knowledge to judge where the wind is coming from. Now, we know at Presswick, the wind is kind, kind of southwesterly. Different up here in the hills, of course, but this is where glassy features can help you identify the wind direction. If you look down at the headland over there, yeah. there is a bit of glassy at the shoreline. Glassy at the shoreline is usually an indication of the upwind direction. Oh, yeah. So, as per the brief, we are going to be operating in a 240-ish direction, yeah. but you can see some patterns in the water. Yeah to indicate where we think the wind is coming from. And it does look indeed as though it's maybe not quite 240, it might be more 270. Obstacles, obstacles above, I don't see anything. There's no wires, cables, towers, wind farms in the locale. Obstacles below and obstacles on the surface. Well, as you can see, we can't see the bottom. Uh, I can't see any obstacles on the surface. Depth is suitable, and then we're into the shape of the body of water. The shape is sufficient for our purposes. The size is most definitely sufficient. The surroundings, high terrain to the south, high terrain to the west-southwest, low elsewhere, plenty of forced landing opportunities both on the surface and on the ground. So follow me through in the controls. Control. So we'll do one inspection pass. I want to get us up just a little bit lower. So, descent checks. Okay. We've got a fisherman this scent. Oh, well, good spot. Um, in a boat just here. I don't know if that was the one we saw, but there's one on the shore here. Uh, quite, a, he's quite close to shore, so. further down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, let's set 18 inches manifold pressure. We're continuing to inspect the area. This should be us into wind. One of the ways we can check we're into wind, John, is look at the GPS and see if we get a ground speed of 74 knots. I'll compare that with what I'm doing when I'm heading down. But their speed's in the white, speed's checked. So I'll set flap 20. There's flap 20. And retrim. So, free landing vital actions. Brakes are under pressure, brakes are on, parking brakes off, undercarriages up. Four blues, pump lights out, visually checked, yeah. mixture's fully rich, prop can go to max, fuel sufficient, flaps are set. T's and P's, stable and normal, hatch and harness is all fine. There's one more new check, F parts. So we'll do the F parts, which confirms flaps are set, props are max, area is clear, water rudders are up, trim set, stick will be fully back on the surface. There we go, about 18, 19, 19 inches manifold pressure. We come onto our base leg, and I'll set 15. 
Well, it seems as though I need a little bit more today, presumably because it's a warm day. And we're looking for between 70 75 miles per hour. And you can follow me through, John. I'll just trim it. Now, 13 inches manifold pressure on final. That should give us 70 to 75. Heels on the floor, not that it matters because the brakes are ineffective. And hold that attitude. See that, that yeah. picture? Yeah. That's giving us about 500 feet a minute. Player to the landing attitude, which is that. Just see the far yeah. bank and no more. Close the throttle, maintain the landing attitude. Stick fully back on the surface. Wow. That's so cool. And the whining noise is not the instructor, but it's the stall warning. <laughs> In a moment, Stuart will demonstrate a takeoff, then it will be my turn. If you want to hear more about the seaplane rating, then my instructor Stuart will be joining me on the launch episode of the Flying Reporter podcast, which is published on Monday the 9th of January. I'm really excited to bring the Flying Reporter to this new platform. The whole project comes to you in association with AeroPS, the payment app for pilots, operators and aerodromes. Make a note to look me up on your usual podcasting service and hit follow to make sure you get a notification of each new episode. Right, back to my lesson and Stuart is going to demonstrate a takeoff. So follow me through in the controls, John. Yeah, control. We're going to take off towards that little farmhouse over there, maybe between the farm and the uh, caravan park. Sticks fully back, and I'll talk you through it. Ready? Yep. So smoothly apply takeoff power. There's the first rise. Pause. See it hesitates. Yeah. Watch what happens next. There's the second rise. Yeah. It's now ready for the step. Ease it onto the step. Anticipate the yaw with my left foot. Look at that. Now the air rudder becomes effective. I've got full right rudder. And we're on the step. That's the correct pitch attitude. God. And we just hold that pitch attitude. I might need to lift the float to help get it airborne. Accelerate and ground effect. Until I see 70 miles per hour. Avoiding people and whatnot, there's a fisherman down there. And there's 70 miles per hour, so I can be a good neighbour and set climb power. 25 inches manifold pressure and 2500 RPM and maintain 70 miles per hour. You have control, John. I have control. So as you saw, the takeoff was a bit like a soft field takeoff in a normal land plane, but with three stages. With the stick fully back and takeoff power set, the aircraft pitches up slightly. That's known as the first rise. As airspeed builds, the aircraft pitches up some more. That's the second rise, and at which point the aircraft can be gently put on the step, which is a section towards the rear of the float. You do this by pitching forward slightly. When the aircraft reaches flying speed and has enough lift to break free from the water, it will climb away. Now, it's my turn. I'll do the pre-landing vital actions. Brakes are on with pressure, brakes are off, parking brakes are off, undercarriage is up. Four blues, pump lights out, gear is up and up visually checked. Mixture is fully rich, prop, go to max. Fuel sufficient, flaps are set, T's and P's all stable and normal, hatch and harness is all secure. So we are downwind now, yeah? You are effectively downwind. Yeah. So we want to go down to 18, don't we? Yep, so manifold pressure, that's it, John, nice. And you can do a 180 degree turn now. To the left, yeah? To the left, to set you've got enough up. room there? Oh, you've got loads of room. You can use up to 30 degrees angle of bank. Okay. And as you go through your base turn, you can come back to 15 inches manifold pressure. hold the nose up and we're aiming for 70 to 75 that's it trim that's the stuff and you're aiming for the headland so we're now on final you know it's 15 final. it's 13 13 i think we should use something like 14 to be honest with you you will possibly run out of aft trim that's a very nice picture john you are absolutely on the money what we want 70 there yeah so you're a bit fast you, i'm at full trim actually fast. you're out of trim 
to bring the power back to 13 inches manifold pressure. And I will follow you through in the controls. Okay. But they are your controls, I'm just following through. There's maybe a little bit of a crosswind, we'll soon find out. Are you happy with this? Yep. Descent rate's a bit fast. That's okay. So speed's bang on, picture's good. Flare to the landing okay. attitude. Hold it there, close the throttle. Hold the landing attitude, just hold the landing attitude. Stick fully back, all the way back. All the way back, all the way back. All the way back. Oh, there's a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Very nicely done. <laughs> that was a really good sight picture on final. You'd nailed the speed. You'd uh, got the rate of descent that I would expect with 13 inches manifold pressure, which is about 400, 500 feet a minute. Couldn't fault you about that. <laughs> that was cool. You like that? Yeah, it's great. Good. While we back taxied using the water rudders for directional control, I asked Stuart how he got into seaplane flying. He got his rating in Vancouver in Canada in 2011 after an experienced flight in a de Havilland Beaver there the year before. On return, he did the seamanship exam and added the rating to his British licence. He's now one of only seven seaplane examiners in the UK. I've done a fair bit of sailing uh, with the family. I always thought it was a rotten idea to mix water and flying until I had that Beaver flight. And then I've just been besotted. It's it's wonderful. Yeah. It's just so difficult to put into words uh, to explain to people what the attraction of this is. Yeah. There is, I don't want to use the word danger in association with flying. There's a different set of risks associated with seaplane operation that require a different kind of threat and error management, and I quite enjoy that. Yeah. I love instructing anyway. Yeah. Um, this is just something else. We're on the water <laughs> in an aeroplane. <laughs> doesn't seem right, does it? It doesn't seem right. It's my turn to attempt to take off. I'm going to raise the water rudder. So close the throttle, John. Okay. I'll raise the water rudder and we'll see well, what the aeroplane does. Right and it just weather cocks into wind. It's clear that what wind there is here today is swirling around the hills, coming at us from various directions. With the engine at idle and the controls neutral, the aeroplane has weather cocked pointing north, suggesting that's where the wind is coming from. So that'll be our takeoff direction this time. So the stick's going to be fully aft. It will want to go left, so I'm going to give you a bit of help with the water rudders, OK? OK. OK, select takeoff, John. Stick fully aft. Full right rudder. Just the first rise, all the way aft. There's the second rise, ease it forward onto the step with full right rudder. Full right rudder. Abort, 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 stop, stop, stop. Probably because we're a bit close to the shoreline. So what I'm going to do is cheat and give you some water rudder to assist with the takeoff. OK. Repeat. OK, here we go. Stick fully aft, all the way aft, John. First rise. All the way aft. Second rise, ease onto the step. Full right rudder if necessary. Ease onto the step. Ease onto the step. Abort. Stop, 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 stop. The wind is a bit beguiling, I think. I've had full right rudder in, but the aeroplane is still turning left. The wind is playing havoc today. Stuart speaks to our camera team, who's with another seaplane instructor on the shoreline. Travel one golf half a mic. The wind is uh, all over the place out here. I think we've got a bit of a tailwind component there. Just couldn't keep the airplane straight, even with uh, water rudders down. Um, here, the wind is it's pretty much straight in my face. I don't know. I'm facing the caravan site. Um, you can feel the breeze on your face. Okay, we'll try again. Okay, turn around again, John. We'll have another go. I think we may just have to accept banana-shaped takeoffs. Stick fully back. Apply takeoff power now with full right rudder. All the way back, first rise. Second rise, ease onto the step, nice and slowly, anticipate with your right foot. That's poor poising, so just you would check that by moving the stick back, then start again, ease it forward, check back every time it poor poises. 
You have control. I have control. Bit more nose up. Bit more nose up. Hold it there. And it should fly off now. There we go. There you go. And accelerate ground effect until you see 70. Now you can start a gentle climb and again we'll go left hand. As you can probably imagine, we did multiple circuits and it would be a bit indulgent of me to share all of that with you here. Curiously though, my first alighting was the best. As time went on, I found it harder to judge the flare and get the right attitude for touchdown. That was probably fatigue to some extent. Now, if you really want to see the whole circuit detail, the raw video is available to watch now on my Supporters Club channel. Visit my website for details or go straight over to the Flying Reporter page on Patreon. OK, pre-flare now. Hold it there. Power Clear again. gently off. Flare. That's perfect. Hold, just hold that pitch attitude. Oh, we were a bit tight, weren't okay. we? That's OK. That's all right. Stick all the way back. Right. Sailing. An important part of the seaplane course how to manoeuvre the aeroplane on water without the engine running. Sailing. We're sailing power off. Yeah. The aeroplane points into wind, the water rudders are up. Mm -hmm. If the aeroplane wasn't into wind, it would just naturally well cock into wind. But if you look at the bank, you'll see that we are actually sailing backwards. Right. And we can control the speed and to some extent the direction of travel by using the normal aerodynamic controls, the doors, right. the flaps, uh, and to some extent ourselves. So for example, if you look well ahead, yeah. let's notice the compass. The compass is showing 260 degrees. Yeah. Let's say I wanted to go to the right for yeah. some reason. I want to beach over there. Treat it like a car steering wheel. Turn the ailerons fully to the right and use cross controls oh. and wait. And we'll see if the wind is strong enough. We'll see what happens. The wind might very well not be strong enough. Oh, no, look at the nose. The nose is going left. Let's say we now want to go to a beach over there. Mm -hmm. So I want to go left, treat it like a car steering wheel. We want to go left. Oh, opposite controls. We're head currently heading 240 degrees. Let's wait and see where we end up. There goes the nose. When you say you want to go left, we're actually turning right. The nose is going right, but the tail is going oh, left, see which is mean. the direction of travel, so everything is reversed because right, we're going backwards. Right. So we can, to a limited extent, power off in a, in a wind, sail, mm. using the normal aerodynamic flying controls. We could expedite matters or even change heading a little bit by using the doors. So how would we... We're trying to just, catch... Just open. trying to catch wind on the right. Yep, yep. That, would, that would turn the nose to the right. Right. Or we could open both doors simultaneously by the same amount, just to increase the, just to increase the speed with which we're going to sail. So there we go. And you can use the flaps as well. Now the trouble using the flaps is it obscures your view behind right. for obstacles. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to seaplane flying. In my next episode, we'll be taking things a step further. Stuart will be teaching me the techniques required for ramping out and we'll head off to Loch Lomond to practice beaching. Make sure you join us for part two by subscribing to my YouTube channel and turning on the notification bell. None of that costs you anything, it just means that my next episode will show up in your YouTube feed. If you'd like to have a go at seaplane flying, either just for fun or even to get your rating, do check out the Scotland On Floats website. The link is on your screen and in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, fly safely, my friends.